Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. We're delighted to be with you. We're getting towards the end of our day together, celebrating a year of the Nightingale Challenge. I've been looking forward to this session all day. This is my fourth session. It's the one I've been waiting for, because in this session, I get to talk to somebody who has become, over the last 18 months, um, a pal, uh, somebody I've looked forward to seeing, and that's Jenny Clark. Um, and Jenny is the CEO of Same You, the Same You um, uh, organization that you've heard about already today, and Jenny will tell you more about that. And we're also joined by Catherine Lamb, Cat Lamb, who is uh, a real live nurse, um, <laughs> actually really working as a nurse at the Radcliffe Infirmary. And we're so delighted to have you, Cat. Um, we really appreciate that you're able to join us and share some of your perspective. Thank you. So Jenny. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we <really> met <laughs> because Amelia, um, your daughter, was very keen to support nursing now. And anybody who is watching this morning um, cannot have failed to be impressed by, I mean, Amelia is wonderful. And there were loads and loads of comments about how everybody loves her, um, you know, as, as an actor, myself included. Um, but what impressed me this morning was that she actually really was very engaged and sincere in what she was talking about. And the fact that, that she read that poem for us, I think, um, which was so moving, uh, was, was a wonderful gift for us. So tell us a bit about uh, Same You and how that came about and your involvement. I bet everybody's very keen to know um, you know where that came from, Jenny. Thank you, Barbara, and, and I really look forward to this opportunity. And thank you for giving it to me for being able to be part of this wonderful day. I've been watching most of the sessions and being blown away by everybody's passion and expertise. Um, but first, I'd also like to congratulate you and everyone at Nursing Now and all nurses around the world because what you've achieved in this first year is phenomenal. And it's making such a change already. And it really gladdens the heart. And really what you're doing, particularly in these terrible COVID times, we all need nurses more than ever. We all now realize we need nurses more than ever. And what you represent is a ray of hope, a ray of hope for a better future for all of us. So I think on behalf of everyone, thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. Um, okay, to same you. Um, some people may have heard about it, some people may not. We're, we're also just a year old. We have a small but really amazing dedicated team. And uh, what we started to do was uh, when Amelia had, she had, she's had two massive brain hemorrhages, uh, two life-threatening events. And so when we were going through all of that, the first one we thought, okay, thank goodness she's all right. We need to do something about it. Then two years later, there was an even worse incident and we said, okay, now we've really got to do something about it. Because we felt so fortunate, so lucky that she has come through it relatively um, okay. She still has lots of problems herself that she has to cope with. And I think she does so quite remarkably. Um, but what we believe that we needed to do was to say, we are, for, we are the patient voice, we are the carer voice. And there's so many people around the world trying to break the problem of brain injury in every sense. So what could we do? So we looked around and we rec recognized that there's so much wonderful research and everybody understands research and the value it brings to help cure diseases. Everybody understands the vital nature of having wonderful acute care because you have a crisis and you go into hospital and you're saved, hopefully. But actually, who talks about the third leg of the stool, as it were? Research, acute, what about recovery? So nobody really 
has recovery as a top priority. And that's all understandable. So what we thought we needed to do was to really look and see and meet wonderful um, neuro rehab specialists and to understand some of the problems that people face uh, accessing neuro rehab. And so that word is a very important one for saying you. It's about the lack of access for brain injury rehabilitation leading to recovery. And we think that um, we perhaps have a chance to stimulate debate, to stir up people, to increase the passion with people around the world and to show that if we all stand up and say it's an inequity, it's an inequality, because people in facing other life-changing experiences and diseases have some help. And really, I think in the UK, we'd call it a postcode lottery, meaning that it depends where you are, you get some help. And I think every there hasn't been one neuro expert I've spoken to that doesn't agree that it's just not consistent. Uh, and it all very much depends where you are. So there isn't enough high dose, high intensity, long term treatment. And without that, people can't get the tools to get themselves better. Another big message from saying you, from listening to people's stories and talking to clinicians and neuro rehab experts, there is a time, and Anila talked about that um, uh, on various calls recently. When you're in hospital, you're a bit scared about leaving hospital. And then when you do leave hospital, you really are very, very scared about your own future. And if you don't have the confidence to take back some control you've given over to amazing nurses and doctors, you're really not going to maximise your potential for recovery. So what we're really trying to do is to raise awareness and take some action. So same you is about it's focused on raising awareness among um, not only among um, the public, but among health professionals, too. And, you know, when you're talking about the postcode lottery, I'm thinking that we have this global audience here um, and it's really a, a national lottery sometimes, too, isn't it? I think of some low income settings where recovery is hardly valued at all. Um, so what you have to say is that it's deeply relevant, I think, for all of us, um, Jenny. So where would you see same you in five years? What are your goals for five years? So um, we've got lots of goals for five years and the team, my wonderful team, uh, and I'm going to do a call out for them all because we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, first of all, Claire, who uh, has helped put this together. She's incredible. And then we have incredible Angela and Tanya and Derek and Kate and Ingela. Now, not everybody is full time. Uh, and we've really only just in the last few months pulled that team together. But uh, I just really want to give them a shout out because uh, they do incredible work to support the brain injury uh, survivor community. So, so uh, where we are, where we hope to be in five years, we really want to shine the light on the problem. So it starts with, so we've got all these different barriers and listening to your discussions today, Nurses have got all different barriers. So I see a huge connection there. So first barrier is nobody understands the need for recovery, really. It doesn't articulate it. We all instinctively understand it. But when we're looking at policymakers, governments, uh, healthcare providers around the world, it clearly isn't the priority. So I think we can make a difference there. So I think we want to start raising awareness and really starting the conversation. Let's talk about brain injury. Let's start talking about it. And we're going to do that in a number of ways. And one of the incredible ways we can do this is that when Amelia um, told her brain hemorrhages story uh, a year ago, she only did it to launch the charity so we can do something. Um, when story, you tell me yours. And so we didn't know if anybody would write to us or email or whatever. And we were literally inundated with these incredible, poignant, real stories that made us all feel just so, in, so grateful that we could maybe do something. And so we've taken 1,400, 1,400 of these stories, which we received, 
which we think is a huge sample of people. And we've got some wonderful experts from UCL who put this together in an analysis and a report. And we're calling it, let's start talking about brain injury. Yeah. And so what we want to do is to show the patient's voice. So that's one, one big thing for that we want to do. That's and then the other thing is to um, take some action to raise funds to support initiatives that will make a difference and make a big change. And so a, an example of that one is that when COVID hit, uh, our plans that we were working on obviously got uh, re repurposed and refocused. And so we work with Spalding Rehab Hospital, fantastic hospital in Boston, wonderful people, and we're supporting them by funding some research. Um, and then we also talk to UCL. And so together, they put together two different programs, both fantastic, to help people, people who would be discharged early because of COVID, going back into their homes, into the communities, and not having any rehab at all. So how do you get uh, therapists and nurses and doctors to talk to people, to give them the first steps of help when you actually can't physically meet them, go into their homes, touch them? So we started a program uh, with UCL called Enroll, and uh, that's halfway through, three months through. Uh, we're now looking to extend it because the results have been pretty amazing. Now, probably as nurses, you don't think you don't you wouldn't think they're amazing because it's what you do every day, but it's the group therapy that uh, we that uh, that the clinicians and the therapists have found so incredible. So people getting people together, helping them through telemedicine, through Zoom, um, and charting their progress, and then the people themselves getting together uh, to, to form champions in, with each other and support groups. So those are two things that we've been doing and what we want to do is to try and increase those dramatically over the next five years. Fantastic. And, um, you know, the whole subject of stories has come up a couple of times, uh, you know, people's experience during the day, um, also to do with nursing and how how stories can be so powerful in um, because they appeal to not only um, the mind, but the heart, don't they, as well? Uh, you know, in the way that stories are told. Um, they do. They do. They do. They, um, I do healthcare commissioners yet in terms of instigating new services, but we're hoping that they, it might, it might reach them. Um, so aside, I think that one of the big things that we want to um, help communicate, and importantly, I'd like some reaction today, if possible, from nurses around the world, what we see as patients and carers, that when you're in recovery and when you're thinking about brain injury, we feel that the services, even though they're, so they're, they're patchy in terms of accessibility, but it also doesn't necessarily treat the whole person. We've found very few, there are some, but we found very few organization services that, that treat the brain, body and mind together. And this is something that we really feel passionate about for nurses to be able to understand all of the complex needs uh, and to make a difference that way. Fabulous. We've had a comment from Fiona Stevenson uh, in the in the chat here um, saying, so pleased to see neuro rehab on the agenda. I just wanted to highlight spinal cord injury is also an area of rehabilitation that's extremely limited in many low and middle income countries. Um, mm -hmm. There are some free nursing modules on spinal cord injury, which she's sharing here. But, uh, you know, it resonates with people, doesn't it? There are there are conditions that need a long term recovery. And often that is an area that's that's missing. I think you've highlighted that. Um, and, and so uh, critical as well. And the other thing that shines through to me, Jenny, both from you and Amelia, is that this uh leadership you're providing in this area is personal it's kind of truly authentic isn't it it's you know because you have because you you're walking the talk really um well and we're not obviously nurses uh we're not um clinicians and so uh when we started or we've been thinking and planning about launching the charity for many years and it's really been, we've been hesitant at first, reluctant to do it, because we thought that we perhaps didn't have the, uh, the 
I'm going to say permission to do it. Uh, and that's an important word because I think that people and nurses, you've been talking about giving people empowerment, empowering nurses to take more control of their futures and their careers, particularly young nurses and starting nurses. And I think we also felt that, you know, did we have that sort of um, um, strength to do it? Uh, and so what we've now found is that uh, it is a big focus, patient-centric um, care, patients uh, and carers coming to the table, working with professionals, just as you said earlier, and trying to lend the voice that because it's it's a, it's a it's all about diversity. So what we found is that clinicians are fantastic and wonderful and they do things their way. So we want to try and disrupt that in, with the best possible intentions. <laughs> you may be love disruptors, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try and just broaden the conversation, broaden and take some action. So um, I think that's that's uh, but that's because of our personal experience, and mm. you know, and, and of course it's uh, you know we're just so grateful that Amelia survived twice. So oh yes, we wouldn't do it. Yes, you and several million other people, I think, but you most of all, Jenny. Um, so I believe that we have a new film to see um, at this point, which is uh, Amelia. So. Claire, are you going to be able to load it? Right, can you see that screen now? Not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yay. We can't, hear can't hear it yet. I can't do that. That's at full volume. Um, Nick, am I doing anything I should be doing? Um, oh. It's gone now. Oh, somebody's posted that they're raising money for Same You for their 21st birthday. On oh, just giving, Charlotte Houghton is her name. Thank, Thank you, Shirley. Charlotte, from all of us. Hmm. Wonderful. Have you any? Have you figured it out, Claire? I'm just going to start again. I don't know why you can't um, see no. it. No. Bear with me a second. Well, we can see it. We can't hear it. That's the only problem. We'll give it another go, eh? If it doesn't work, we'll have to have Jenny talk us through what's in it. <laughs> also, if there's a link to it online, we could perhaps share it in the chat box. So oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. I can see that. Is it on YouTube? Oh, here we go. It is. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it again. It's at full volume. Let's try it again. Mm. Don't know why. Hmm. No, my, um, I can't hear it. Can anybody else? No. 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 Um, I can actually see that my mic is picking up the sound, registering it, but the, but, um, the speaker isn't speaking it. No. Well, shall we just... I think we'll have to, yeah. Um, yes. I mean, it's lovely to look at. Beautiful. Um, Jenny, tell us what's in it. <laughs> okay so all right well i can't compete with my daughter will never <laughs> even try but what she uh, what she went on uh, on camera to say was that hear we it. at saying you yeah sorry claire no we can't hear it at all
I mean, it's odd. It, it looks like we should be able to hear it, but it's all there. I'll add the link. Okay, we'll put the link here in the chat box for people to watch it. And meanwhile, Jenny's going to give us a synopsis. I'll do my best. Okay, so um, we have got a program at saying you called Super Nurses. And that's because we wanted to start the charity with nurses. Uh, and we feel very, very passionately that nurses are the heart and secret to long-term recovery. Because we've got personal experiences that when you leave hospital, uh, the wonderful neurosurgeons and neurotherapists have, have finished with you, You're, you can leave hospital, uh, and their job is done. And we really feel that uh, super nurses are nurses that can help in every single walk of life. So not just recovery, but we felt very strongly because Amelia was talking about her super nurse, a fabulous person called Tina Stevens, in fact, who Kat knows. She is a colleague of Kat in a different hospital at Queen Square in London, the National Hospital. Uh, and so uh, Amelia was just talking about her super nurse and why she was super to Amelia. So in Amelia's words, it's because Tina met her when she was admitted in acute, pre-coiling, and then was with her all the way through to discharge, all the three weeks in the hospital, coming in every day, seeing how she was, building that relationship. So that's really, really important, that relationship building nurses do. And, and then and when she was discharged, Amelia immediately felt so bad and insecure she found a reason to go back to hospital. And Tina was there at the other end of the phone checking on her. And for years since, because it has been years now, uh, Tina's always there at the end of the phone for either Amelia or myself when we say, oh, Amelia's got a headache, this has happened, you know, she feels sick. And, and many people, you know, who haven't experienced brain injury would just think that that was nothing. But Tina can really understand, and I'm sure Kat's exactly the same, because you've had a brain injury, these things are just you know, hyper intense and acute. Yeah, yeah absolutely, Jenny. That's, um, it is such a, a good description really of, if you like, the essence of good nursing. I used to, I used to, of course, used to be a nurse. I don't practice anymore, but um, I was a, a family nurse practitioner and I, I used to teach nurses. Um, and one of the things I used to say to them in one of the sessions on communication was that, you really understand what really good nursing is the minute you experience it. Um, and that's when you can say, this is the nurse I want. Mm. Um, and I, I always, with a group of friends, you know, we always had a, a little deal going on that if we got sick, there were certain people. <laughs> we do as well. <laughs> I want you to be my nurse. Um, and what it's based on, I think, is really feeling heard, which is what you're saying, Jenny, that, you know, mm -hmm. when you're sick, you want to feel somebody's listening to you. Um, and I've been looking after my elderly neighbour during this COVID-19 um, crisis. And she she's not had COVID, but she's uh, had a very she's quite frail and she's had a, she has a bad heart. So I've been taking her to appointments and sort of generally trying to help out a bit. Um, and she's, she was taken into a big London hospital. We live in Kent and she was, you know, shipped into a big London hospital because she was so poorly. And she said to me one day, you know, she said, I said, what was it like? And she said, well, she said the doctors were cold fish. <laughs> she said they were so busy. Nobody really wanted to listen to me at all. But the nurses were wonderful because they came and listened to me. And I just thought that was interesting. Not that I want to have a downer on the doctors because I'm, you know, I don't. I mean, some of my best friends and all that. But, um, you know, it is important. It's an important element of getting close to a patient as a nurse, I think. Um, you know, that you, you have to really listen and spend time to know what's going on. And more, even more importantly, during recovery, because... What we never know is, you know, what people take away with them about that illness. 
So, Kat, I want to bring you in. You're a real Hello. nurse working in this area. What yes. do you think of these ideas? Give us your take. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the I've, I've listened to the video that um, Amelia did, and it was amazing. Um, and I know Tina very well because we meet as a group, neurovascular nurses, once a year as well. So we kind of meet up and we... We, we talk about um, sort of best practice, what we've been doing in our areas and whether we can help each other um, to see whether we can try and streamline the pathway for this patient group a lot of the time, because it is different in, in a lot of areas and we want to try and stop that. So it's, it, it is more streamlined so that there is that access, like you said, to the rehab services. But um, the super nurse that Tina um, is, it's, it's certainly about being compassionate, about being caring, you know, being a role model for sure. You know, I think back to when I was a student nurse and, and I can still remember working with neuro nurses and thinking that's what I'm going to be like when I'm a fully fledged <laughs> nurse sort of thing. Um, but it is important to build up that relationship with patients and with families as well, because like Tina, my role is I would meet people at admission in that most acute phase and then I follow them throughout the whole of their hospital stay and I do all the follow up so I will see them on recovery as well. Um, and for sure they will have lots of questions and anxieties and my role is to help try and stop them, prevent, you know, prevent them from readmitting to hospital, going to see their GPs a lot maybe. If I can at least stop that a few times just by having a conversation taking away some of that fear because it is terrifying you know you want to get out of hospital as quickly as possible and then when you are at home you're absolutely terrified and think I want to go back I felt safe um so yeah very good point yeah and I think if you've got the confidence in the nurse that's looking after you then I think it will really uh, it, it will certainly reduce that anxiety and help with your recovery and I think it's not just the patient it's families as well knowing that they can contact me and say um, you know we're having a bad day or you know so and so is having a bad day what can we do to help um yeah. i hope that's answered it sorry <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, I oh, Kat, absolutely and you're right to bring in families you know it's um it's the whole uh, it's it is the whole the effect of the illness and the recovery on everybody yeah, isn't it's it? hugely life-changing yes and it's invisible you know you can't see it so that recovery is happening without other people employers gps without those people knowing so it's important then to hopefully one day it'd be great to try and involve them more with getting people back to work and yes it like would. That. yeah it's it's uh, so at the radcliffe do you have a multidisciplinary approach like a team meeting about people we do we um i, I link in um very well with the physiotherapists and the occupational therapists speech and language um, and of course, the doctors and other nurses on the wards and we we meet up at least once a week and talk about particular patients and then, you know, what kind of rehab needs do they have and try and address them uh -huh. early. So I start thinking as soon as someone comes in, I literally look at their address and think, right, what's available in their area? What do I think that they might need? Um, and then when people are, are discharged, then I do a lot of referrals on then as well, because sometimes you don't know what someone needs. If they seem fine when they leave the hospital, mm. I can usually guarantee when I do follow up a month or even two months later, there, there's something that they definitely need, but it, it wasn't visible previously. It's when they tried to go back to work or when they tried to, to mm. do more within yeah. their family. So, yeah. People, and then after, hmm, sorry. I was just gonna say people don't know what they don't know, do they? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and it's ever changing. So I was saying to Jenny previously that um, a lot of people think that maybe specialist nurse roles aren't hands on, but you can make it hands on. You can get involved with the patient care whilst they're going through you know, um, the hospital. I make a point with some patients, if I can, if I've got time to join the physiotherapy session or the OT session so I can sit in and I can see how they're progressing. So when I'm talking to families, I feel like I'm giving them true information i've witnessed it i've seen it and i'm a, you know a little bit more involved and certainly helps with that referral on to rehab services so um kat tell us something about your career how did you get to this job as a, a specialist in this area oh gosh <laughs> um well i started nursing probably 20 20 so years ago um before that i was doing meals and drinks 
um, at the hospital and a bit of cleaning. And then I then became a healthcare assistant and then oh, a nurse. Wow. Um, so I started all the way and um, wow. thoroughly enjoyed it. And then my first placement was, um, sorry, my last placement was on um, a stroke unit, a neurology ward in London. So I then had my first job there. And that's where I got my real buzz, I think, from neuro. I think it's, I, I call it a Marmite kind of job. You either love it or hate it. You know, it's not for everybody. It, it's very challenging. Yeah. Um, it's very different each day, but it's it's hugely interesting. And to to see the progression that people can make back to some kind of independence is 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 hugely rewarding. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is there but, a course? Uh, is there a course in this in neuro rehab? Um, I think there are some sort of modules maybe for sort of new rehab but they're certainly not enough I don't think um I think Mm -hmm. I think I remember when I was a nursing student there was nothing about it at all um so whether it's something that can be introduced when people are doing their their nursing training um or if they're starting on a neuro ward then certainly there needs to be some good courses. We're very fortunate in Oxford. We do have a, a neuro module, a master's module that we do. And we all of neuro nurses, we all try and do study days. Um, so I do one twice a year, which is a two day course for in-house for nurses, all about subarachnoid hemorrhage. So we're trying to highlight it, but it's not really accredited what I do. It's just in-house, whereas it would be really good to look at other things as well, not just the you know, the coiling, the clipping, the treatments, it's about the psychological side, that recovery, the mental health aspect. I think if we had those skills and we were taught them, it would certainly help us then help the patients. Yes, that's that's really interesting. Um, yes, not least because mental health is kind of coming to the fore, isn't it, at the moment with yeah. one thing and another. And uh, that's, I found that really difficult as well for patients because they can't mm-hmm. have visitors. So yes. the families, they help with the rehab almost when they're in hospital, just by being there, that familiarity. So we're trying to do FaceTime and things like with iPads, whatever we can do. You know, the nurses are great. They're doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's one of the things that's come out of uh, COVID-19, isn't it? That, that there is the it's not only the acute illness, which is so devastating for people, but it's the recovery yeah. as well. And, um, yeah, people are saying it's, you know, it's unpredictable. It takes a long time. Um, And I think it highlights, again, that, you know, all health professionals, but nurses in particular, I think, because we're so close to patients very often, we need to be thinking long term. You know, who's there when you go home? Who's there to answer questions and so on? Yeah. Jenny, I know that same you is interested in education as well. and supporting education. Do you want to tell us a bit about what's happening in that area? Thank you, yeah. So uh, the first in place was um, to a discussion with the Royal College of Nursing, uh, and they've been fantastic and supportive. And they uh, uh, and, and they discussed with us opportunities for providing um, some funding for educational modules. So we discussed it at length, and with the Royal College of Nurses Foundation, which is pretty fantastic too, lots of support from them. And what we have uh, arrived at is a um, a curriculum that's currently in progress, not being finished quite yet, and that is the Royal College of Nursing and Nottingham University. So what this does is uh, it combines Uh, training uh, in in a post-grad module to look at the mental health aspects, the the mental health, the emotional aspects, as well as the physical and cognitive. So the training programs that are available don't cover the whole gamut that we see as being vital for nurses to have experience and training in, because that's the way, uh, it's it's such a great way to communicate with people. And so that is a program that will be ready um, and for pilot uh, at the end of this year. Mm-hmm. And we are funding 20 nurses to, to go on the pilot. And then we hope that this will come, uh, it, will be, it will be obviously reviewed and seen whether it's successful. And then our great hope is that it does get adopted uh, into many places uh, uh, around the world 
so people can have the, the benefit of this as a training. Mm. So That's it's great. Great. It's wonderful. Sounds, isn't it? sounds brilliant. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. Look forward to uh, when mm. it's available. Yes, and I, I think it, it might help move the profession towards, you know, educational standards for this sort of work, um, which is really important, I think. Kat, what do you, do you think your undergraduate uh, education prepared you for this in any way? Uh, probably not, no. Um, <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time, um, uh, certainly from school, so, you know, so big admit here, I wasn't brilliant at school. I didn't concentrate. I didn't really understand what I wanted to do. So, mm. you know, you take that long slog then, you have to then go back to, you know, college, night school, things like that, get yeah. your grades up and do it. But I think the focus now really is on education and having that master's level education. So I'm on the A&P, the Advanced Nurse Practitioner Pathway. So I will be prescribing, I'll be history taking um, and doing a lot of, traditionally medical thought um, roles and I think it's really important that we as nurses just shine the light that we can do all of these things um, as advanced nurse practitioners um, and you know and the education um, obviously it's, it's getting the funding though and that's that's the trouble a lot of the time is having the time to do it as well you know a lot of places have to do it in their own time use their annual leave um, do a lot of things on their days off um, or the money just isn't available and you end up fighting every year to try and find a place. So the whole pathway becomes very, very lengthy and protracted. Yeah. Well, we now have an opportunity, don't we? I think that says, mm. says the organisation that's organised a virtual day-long conference. But, you know, I think we do have many more opportunities now to use virtual platforms yeah. for education and so Jenny I see this could be a very exciting development Absolutely. Um, yeah I noticed um, that Fiona also put some um, put a link to some of these uh, modules she says we're part of the interprofessional team which includes the patient the family main carer this is Fiona Stevenson um, we can advise support counsel listen signpost regarding every health system a life-changing injury affects the whole family and needs a very dedicated team of healthcare professionals as nurses we are the eyes and ears for all the team i think that's very mm. interesting isn't it that's mm. spinal, spinal uh, injury rehabilitation um because it's right it's all about, so while this is about specifically about neuro rehabilitation recovery is needed across the board and, and so that is the big, that's one of the big messages, isn't it? I think that nurses can can take and, and communicate and, and share with people that this is such an important area of health. Uh, and I think that uh, I think that anything that uh, we can do to build communities that really uh, want to get involved in recovery would be amazing. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm just going to say we've got 98 people on this call. Um, if you, anybody has any questions for, or comments that you'd like to share, please put them in the chat box for me um, to see. So, um, Kat, if, if you were going to offer advice to a young nurse, which is what the Nightingale Challenge is all about, to young nurses um, who was interested in this area, what, what would you say? Absolutely, just just do it. <laughs> um, it's it's really important, you know. Like if they're young nurses, they're working on wards. They just they can think of recovery. Think of there's so many different avenues of nursing that you can go down now. This it's it's really opened up hugely since when I first started. So you know, the day that they meet the patient, you know, they can be thinking about their recovery. They can be you know, thinking of those kinds of things themselves. And, and you know, and I thought that maybe uh, as student nurses, maybe specialist nurses could go to the universities and mm. show them what, what we do. And, um, you know, they do come to us for placements, but I think if they know when they're in the first year, maybe, or the second year, that, you know, these roles do exist and they're not just managerial roles, they can be hands-on, they're very different, they're very advanced, some of them. Um, and I think it's important if they know that, um, that their support and their help 
and with education and guidance that, that you know there'll be the newer nurses of the future the ones that are going to be looking after me and however well, hopefully not but you know you never know but you know I'd like to know that whatever nurses are going to be in the future that they are sort of you know aware of you know things and you know educationally the challenges that they might face they've, they've had the opportunities given to them and yeah but I just wanted to make a point about sort of recovery is that sometimes patients can be each other's own advocate to be the best people mm -hmm. for recovery um I do um have a focus group which I run which runs sort of three to four times a year and we've got an online platform and I know that people if they're having a bad day when they're at home they post onto there and I keep an eye on it from the periphery because I want it to be their group um and the amount of support they get from other people who have been through what they've been through, I think it resonates even deeper than me saying it's okay, it's normal to feel like this and, you know, about fatigue management and those things. Mm -hmm. So patients yeah. and families, I think, really look after each other. So, you know, well done to them for being such a support bubble, I think. Yes, here, here. Um, yes, I, many years ago, I had uh, a serious illness and, um, and but the patient support group was very important to me, mm -hmm. even though I worked at the World Health Organization at the time, <laughs> I had access to every bit of information that I could possibly have. But I wanted to talk to somebody who'd been you understood yeah, yeah. Yeah. and just kind of say, how did you feel? And, you know, did you move on? Um, exactly. Ah, yeah. So yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte Holton's written after my experience with neuro recovery, I want to be a nurse, but I don't know what qualifications I would need. So I guess you'd have to do basic nursing, would you, first? Or can you specialise early on? Uh, no, it's best, I think, a lot of the time if you qualify, and I think it's best to um, certainly do at least a couple of years in a sort of general sort of area just to get some really good experience of being with patients for different conditions because neuro patients don't just have things wrong with the brain they also get chest infections urine infections heart conditions yeah. they've got other comorbidities yeah. that also need addressing which might be complicating their their pathway so to have a really good base knowledge of that and an understanding I think is really important and it will give you so much more confidence I think than looking after patients talking with families breaking bad news that kind of thing it's something that you can't just get straight away I think it's something that grows and develops and I think the more confident you are as a nurse then the more high up that you go and you know if you specialize and that's brilliant but I wouldn't specialize too early I spent sort of mm -hmm. 15 years as a nurse doing things before I decided to specialize mm -hmm. um, in my role but that's not to say it's right or wrong it, it's very individual for everyone but um, I wish you all the best. Do it. <laughs> oh, do it. Yes. Good idea. Do it. <laughs> we need you. <laughs> yes, exactly. We need you. But I. But you're right about practice, aren't you? Um, you know that experience is is interesting. That we have to learn to learn from experience, really. Uh, and when I was a teacher, a, a nurse teacher, um, you know, teaching other nurses, that was one of the things to help them was to look at what they did to reflect on the practice um, and that's why days like this I think are, are quite important because we have space to to think about um, what we're doing because I just add to that because we we do believe that you know that compassion and understanding is so critical in us but it it is based on experience. It should be based on the experience. Because, mm -hmm. for instance, when we started, she said, what I would love to do is to be able to make sure that there's somebody, for everyone recovering from uh, a neuro crisis, that could have the time to take their hand, to actually mm -hmm. sit and listen to what they're going through, the patient's going through, uh, and then to do something about it and help them and give them education about what's happened to them, how they can uh, look, learn to adapt. And so she she always felt, has always felt that that needs to be a nurse. Mm. Because if you experience and compassion, then you've really got the whole deal. And so we, we with, with saying you, we, we were trying to build a broader community as possible. So professional people with brain injury, their relatives, their families, their carers, and people in the general public to help support the cause and to help raise funds 
uh, to, to make the changes that's really needed. So it would be great for people to understand a little bit more about Sonyu and, and to share their own experiences uh, with us. Mm. Do you, is there enough investment in neuro rehabilitation? Do you think? I mean, talk about government investment. I know we can only talk about it here. It's one place we know. <laughs> we don't see that, and, and so we see some pockets. But uh, you know, I think we only have to, to to think about where in in most countries where is the recovery hospital. So there's not enough investment about recovery. Maybe COVID is a tipping point where <clears throat> we will be aware, as you said earlier, Barbara, the need for recovery. And so what we're doing uh, with a, a leading uh, university hospital uh, in London is to try and create a blueprint and then get the blueprint created and, and, and initiated uh, for a centre, a daycare centre, where it's a complete continuous circle of, of care, starting with you come through the door, you've had an, an, an ABI, you come through the door, then you're eligible to be on a clinical trial. Now that's good in its, its, its own way. You start to go through the therapy process, looking at high dose, high intensity, long term therapies in the conventional sense, and then you bring in art therapies and music therapies and other cultural therapies that we know from listening to people really, really make a difference. And then having education programs and then outreach into the community. So, our big 20 year vision is for saying you to have helped facilitate a big hub and spoke change the neuro rehab and hopefully uh, do some funding uh, and then see how it can be adopted not just in the UK but around the world. Yeah, wow. It'd be great to have an ABI pathway <coughs> I'm sure like to have stroke pathways it would be be amazing. It's so extraordinary though isn't it that there isn't? No. Yeah. Don't you think it's I mean <laughs> it's very postcode. There, there are so in some areas it's brilliant. They've got really good community support and community links. But in other areas, it's that there, there, there is nothing really, and you're relying on charities who, a lot of the time, don't even get government funding. They they rely on they kind of keep alive by having fundraising events and things, and you're relying on those charities to step in to help you help the person you know and it shouldn't wow. it shouldn't have to be like that yeah. they should be a complementary part of it they shouldn't be the forefront of it taking you know the slack it exactly. should be coming from from government there should be money available to create these pathways for all these patients go. absolutely can't <laughs> yeah. go, go. Yeah. so jenny i wondered we're just about to finish now um but i wondered if you would just tell us why the name same you Okay, we went through and we had lots of, an agency give us lots of suggestions and images and Amelia uh, saw this and she immediately resonated with it because when you've had a brain injury, you feel your brain has let you down. There is an element of shame, a big element of shame, <clears throat> something wrong with your brain. And I don't know about you, but you know, one feels that your brain is you. And what you want to do is to get back to who you were before your trauma. And inside, everybody is the same. So we just really wanted to show that everything that we're focused on is to help people feel as close as possible to the same you that they recognize inside themselves. Thank you, Jane. I, I wanted you to, to, I knew that. Actually, I knew that was why, but I wanted you to explain it because I think it's something that um, will resonate with nurses around the world because one of our goals is that people can return to health to be the same person they were before they got sick, no matter what, um, you know, caused the sickness. And I think that is an incredibly powerful name. So... I think we're right on time to <laughs> thank you both. It's the first time today I've managed. To <laughs> thank uh, you. Thank you both so very much for being willing to be with us, for sharing your experiences, your thoughts. I know you've got an announcement coming up in the final session. So everybody, the 100 people who are now on this session, be sure to tune in to the final session <laughs> um, for yet more exciting news. Jenny, Kat, thank you so much. Claire and Nick, thank you for your support. It's thank been you.
fantastic. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye.